Bangor. From the great Northwoods to the Rockbound Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at FoxBangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Hello, everyone. Today on Good Morning Maine, Maine Republicans propose a bill that would require voter ID in order to cast a ballot. Plus, a busy day of court news, including the sentencing of a man convicted of killing a woman in Waterville. And Bangor is receiving federal help solving the crisis for those who don't have a home. Good morning, and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. We're going to start with a little breaking news. Just want to let you know there's been a bad accident. It sounds like a bad accident on the Bennick Road up in Alton. Apparently, that's where a vehicle has gone off the roadway and struck a pole. We don't really know much other than that. It happened about 15 minutes ago. Last we knew, rescuers were going to the scene, and apparently there might be some injuries there. We don't know. Right. One thing we do know is that emergency crews will be there, so that might cause some delays for anybody heading up through the Bennett Road in Alton. Seems so like a advised. tough stretch right it there. Is. It yep. is. All right. I mean, in other news, it's going to be a beautiful day. The sun's going to yeah. be out, and not as cold as we've been seeing it. Very nice. A nice sunny day on tap. Yeah. Here's Devin Biggs. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Tuesday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Crosby Sports Shop. With a large supply of ammo in stock, custom Damascus knives, fishing supplies of all kinds, concealed weapons classes, and a full line of Dragonfly UV tackle, plus the latest in ultraviolet tackle. Call today. All right, let's get in there this morning. The clouds are getting out of here right now. Here's that line right there tracking from the west going toward the east. So that means some good news for us. That will mean that we're going to see a lot of sunshine. So definitely have the sunglasses handy as you do head out the door. Let's zoom things out right now. This is the last part of that area of low pressure that's moving from the west to the east. There's another system on toward the west, but for now, we will stay quiet today. But our next system will be moving in later on tonight with some snow that will fall with it as well. Before today, a lot of sunshine, more clouds by tonight. By about 10 to 11 o'clock tonight, the snow will pass through with about 1 to 2 inches of snow, give or take, before we're all finished up. It will all start to back off as we head towards Wednesday morning. As for the winds, not too bad either. They'll be kind of switching directions from time to time, but they will start to pick up again, especially as we head towards your Wednesday with another system that will be passing through overall, mainly that system that's passing through tonight. 30 degrees today, mostly sunny. That south wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 20 degrees. Snow showers on the way, 1 to 2 inches possible. South wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. A lot of sunshine temperatures reaching for the 30s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. All right, thank you, Devin. A proposed bill could change voter registration requirements, making it harder for some people to vote in Maine. Devin Dagnall but with officials to learn more. Maine Senate Republicans have proposed a bill that would require potential Maine voters to present specific information in order to register to vote. If passed, LD34 would not allow voters to use previously accepted forms of ID, such as tribal and or university-issued photo identification. But according to the sponsor of the bill, Senator Matt Pouliot, that could change. I actually proposed an amendment to allow for state university uh, or state community college IDs to be used as long as the student were a Maine resident. As it stands, the bill allows for voters to use government-issued photo IDs such as driver's licenses, U.S. passports, and concealed handgun permits. The bill also states that those who do not have those forms of identification will be allowed to request a free voter's identification from the Maine Secretary of State. Pouliot says the bill has been proposed as a way to combat a growing concern about voter fraud in the state. There is a war in this nation on the free form of, of voting that we have in terms of lack of public confidence and trust. And so this is not a politically motivated bill. It's a bill to that seeks to help restore confidence and trust in the electoral process in the state. We already require proof of identity when you register. Making Mainers take that extra step of showing some sort of specific ID when you go to vote is discriminatory, will create long lines, and really is a solution in search of a problem. At a hearing on Monday, Secretary of State Shanna Bellows testified against the proposed legislation. Bellows says if passed, the legislation will do more harm than good. As it's unnecessary, it would create logistical consequences, including long lines at the polls, and potentially discriminate against voters. No official decision has been made on the bill yet. 
The legislature will vote on the matter next week. Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A man has been sentenced to 42 years in jail for the murder of his longtime girlfriend back in 2019. Nicholas Lovejoy previously pled guilty to the murder of Melissa Sousa, the mother of their twin daughters. Lovejoy shot Sousa four times in October of 2019. Sousa's friends and family say the verdict has brought some level of closure after the loss of a loved one. The prosecution says this case sheds light on the tragic realities of domestic violence. I'm relieved that it's finally over because it's been a long three years. She was a good mother and she was a very thoughtful and kind and loving person. So certainly if there's anybody out there watching this um, who is in a similar situation um, or is suffering from domestic violence, please reach out. There are so many resources uh, available to you. Monday in court, defense attorney Scott Hess interviewed a neurologist to argue how Lovejoy's 2012 car accident caused injuries to his brain. The defense contended that Lovejoy's jail sentence should reflect the fact that a trained professional says those head injuries could have influenced Lovejoy's cognitive thinking as it relates to his behavior. I think he's processing it. Obviously, it was a significant sentence that the court imposed. The brain injury that Mr. Lovejoy suffered, though, was catastrophic and was something that no doubt permeated in all areas of his life. Hess says Lovejoy is currently using a wheelchair due to falls while in jail due to repeated seizures. The defense plans to file for appeal sometime this week based on their claims that evidence was recovered by violating Lovejoy's constitutional rights. The maternal grandmother of a three-year-old boy killed in June of 2021 was sentenced on charges in connection with that case, but will serve no further jail time. Sherry Johnson originally pleaded not guilty to a charge of hindering apprehension or prosecution in the death of her grandson, Maddox Williams. Police say Johnson lied to them about her daughter's whereabouts for several days after Maddox was taken to the hospital by Johnson and her daughter and pronounced dead. Yesterday, Johnson entered a guilty plea and was sentenced to three and a half years in jail, all of it suspended, along with two years of probation. Maddox's paternal grandmother said she was disappointed with the sentence. I was hoping for jail time. Uh, I was disappointed, but I, I figured there wasn't going to be any more additional jail time. But I just, this is my only shot to tell her how I feel. Johnson is also required to do 48 hours of community service. Maddox Williams' mother, Jessica Williams, was previously convicted and sentenced to prison. A Belgrade man has received a sentence for a bank robbery in central Maine. 47-year-old Clinton Damboise has been ordered to spend more than eight years in prison for holding up a Camden National Bank in September of 2016. Officials say he told a teller it was a robbery and gestured to the waistband of his jacket and said he had a gun. Damboise then fled with some money, but he was later identified along with a 98 months in prison. He has also been ordered to pay more than $3,000 in restitution. You know what I did? I unplugged the mouse and now I can't run the teleprompter. Here, I have this for you. Okay, I'll read it from this then. You can't, you can't leave anything technical with me because I'll, I'll end up breaking it. Oh, is it working now? All right. A Maine corrections officer who caused a crash that killed a nine-year-old girl after he worked consecutive 16-hour shifts won't be serving time behind bars. 65-year-old Kenneth Morang, who was convicted in October of manslaughter, gave an emotional apology to the girl's family before a judge sentenced him to six years, all of which was suspended. He must serve what is it, four years of probation. Prosecutors say Morang knew he was too tired to be driving after working those consecutive shifts down at the Cumberland County Jail. Morang collided with a family that was returning home in their SUV after seeing the movie Lion King back in 2019. Nine-year-old Raylan Bell died several days after the collision. Morang, who faced up to 30 years in prison, has resigned from his job at the Cumberland County Jail because of the injuries he suffered in the crash, preventing him from returning to work. As the homeless crisis in Bangor worsens, um, a federal emergency management team is stepping in to help. Our Matthew Jaroncic has the story. This is the most homeless I've ever seen in the city of Bangor, and I've been working with the homeless for 15 years. The city of Bangor is working with a group from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to combat the current homelessness epidemic. HUD can deploy subject matter experts to a community, to an event, 
um, to address the needs within a community. And our need was how do we move individuals who are in encampments into housing? The technical assistance team has worked in larger metropolitan areas to quickly rehouse the homeless, including Seattle, Los Angeles, and San Diego. The group has been working with the city in assessing the areas that need the most help in devising solutions on how to get the unsheltered into proper housing. Many like Mansion Church pastor Terry Dinkins, whose church converts to a warming center, applauds the city for bringing in reinforcements. I think it's very important to help the homeless in this time because we have so many of them. But to get help, wherever we can get that help is greatly appreciated. The federal government started working with Bangor as early as mid-September of 2022. Federal officials arrived in the city to discuss options regarding how to mitigate the growing homelessness crisis. According to a recent report from city manager Debbie Lorry, she says there's some progress in getting those who need housing what they need. Anytime that you can connect an individual to housing, it's a win. Five individuals who had been in one of our encampments were housed. How is that not a win? The fight is not over, though, and Lori says it's time for the city to act swiftly in housing the homeless. The hard work starts now. We now know everybody. So now every time a unit or a landlord calls and says, you know, I have a unit that I could be able to use, we're trying to move people into that unit quickly. In Bangor, Matthew Jaronsik reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The Legislature's Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs has passed a bill designed to protect cannabis caregivers and patients by clarifying, uh, clarifying the meaning of the term cannabis paraphernalia in Maine statutes. LD83 is sponsored by Democratic State Senator Craig Hickman of Winthrop. The bill passed unanimously through the committee and is in response to a previous update from the Maine Office of Cannabis Policy. At the time, the updated guidance defined many cannabis products, such as pre-rolled cannabis cigarettes, as tobacco products. That meant that many cannabis caregivers had to receive a retail tobacco license in order to continue selling those products or face hefty fines or imprisonment. LD83 defines cannabis paraphernalia to draw a clear distinction between that definition and the definition of tobacco products. The bill now faces votes in both the Senate and the House. Still kind of a new thing they're considering, meshing those two things together. This way it will clarify things. I've also learned, do not pull on the mouse too hard because it rips out, out of the USB underneath this desk. And the USB is really hard to find. Yeah, so we learn anyway. something new every yeah, day. This runs our teleprompter every day, yes. so the words we're reading. Right. Anyway. We're not just scrolling the web as, no. as we read. Yeah. Yeah, we're not memorizing everything. Yeah. So, and if, yeah. all of a sudden when it goes south... Yeah. Well, you're out of luck. Yep. So. Okay. Well, the time now is 8.13. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, we'll hear about the possible change of regulations for what sizes of lobsters are appropriate to keep. But first, another check of that weather forecast. Real nice day ahead today. It will be mostly sunny with highs near 30 degrees. Maybe a little snow tonight with lows dropping down to 20. Tomorrow, a partly cloudy day. It will be breezy with highs near 41 degrees. Comfy. Cozy, relaxing, not Joe, Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices, not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Center Theater for the Performing Arts, Dexter Lumber, Hometown Health Center, Howard Insurance, Twin City Tile, and Urban Air Adventures. Durable, sturdy, stylish, not Joe, Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. 
Sunday, after the players take the field for Super Bowl 57, contestants will take to the kitchen for Gordon Ramsay. We want you to take something humble and elevate it into something amazing. This three-tiered cooking coliseum will be the site of their dreams or nightmares. It's gross. It's go time. Contestants will run, pass, and defend to become the next level chef. You're all here to fight for the title. Let's go! Gordon Ramsay's Next Level Chef premieres after the Super Bowl on Fox. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Those who had chicken pox as a kid have an increased risk of developing shingles. Shingles is a viral infection that causes a painful, blistering rash on your body. It can be treated or prevented. As Jody Hersey tells us, one brewer man found out firsthand just how painful the infection can be. Just perpetually uncomfortable. You know, it's, it's, there, sometimes it's burning, sometimes it's stinging. Um, sleep has not been good. Tom Osborne is the creative director at Town Square Media in Brewer. In January, he had the unlucky fortune to experience shingles, a viral infection that just appeared one day on the back of Osborne's head. Um, strangely enough, I gotta say I consider this a mild case of shingles. My mother had it uh, when she was in her 80s, and I don't know if age has anything to do with how badly you react to it. And she didn't get the shot. Shingles is preventable. Dr. Mark Abel with Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center says those over the age of 50 are encouraged to get the two-dose shingles vaccine. I was just reading that about 30 percent of the United States population is expected to get shingles during their lifetime. So super common. So typically it starts off as kind of a bumpy rash. It, it's interesting because it, it tends to be on one side of your body. It doesn't cross the midline of your body uh, because of the way the nerves are distributed inside of us. And it typically, like I said, is on the chest, the abdomen, the back. Osborne's doctor prescribed the antiviral acyclovir, which Osborne says is already making shingles more bearable. I understand there are a lot of people who have issues with vaccines, and I, I totally respect that. Um, but this is a vaccine that's been proven. It's, I'd do it in a heartbeat. And I wish I had, because you don't want this. You don't want this. In Brewer, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Our thanks to Tom for sharing his story. Uh, the rules about the minimum and maximum sizes of lobsters that can be trapped off the New England coast could soon become more strict, potentially bringing big changes to one of the most valuable seafood industries in the country. Lobstermen are required to measure lobsters from eyes to tail and must throw them back if they're too large or too small. The rules are intended to maintain a breeding population of the lobsters in key areas such as the Gulf of Maine and George's Bank. The Regulatory Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission is now considering changing the standards by a fraction of an inch in some of those fishing grounds. The Department of Agriculture, Conservation and Forestry has announced February as Brown Tail Moth Awareness Month. According to Maine Forest Service, winter is the best time to spot the caterpillars lying dormant in their winter webs. Destroying a brown tail moth's winter web will prevent more caterpillars from populating, thus reducing the presence of toxic hairs, which cause poison ivy-like rashes and asthma-like reactions. Sometimes that clipping of the webs can at least delay the arrival of a larger infestation to that area. And so there's a couple of ways that brown tail can be managed and one is as I mentioned through that web clipping and that is uh, simply cutting the, the webs from the tree and then destroying them somehow. The caterpillar webs can be destroyed safely by fire or by soaking the web in soapy water for hours at a time. To learn more information about the moths and preventative tips visit maine.gov slash knockout BTM. And if you need that URL repeated, head to foxbangor.com and we'll have all the information. Yeah, time is now to act with those because they're a real pest in the summertime. Yeah, I know. We've talked about it the past couple hours. If you've ever been victim of yeah. that rash, it is so uncomfy and it lingers. It does. I think it, you know, it will clear up and then weeks later you can right. get it again. So, right. Yeah. Yep. All right, well, the time now is 8.19. Coming up after the break, a fast-moving warship is expected to be commissioned into service in Maine soon, bearing the name of our state's capital. Plus, Angus King met with veterans at the Brunswick, Brunswick American Legion yesterday with big changes in mind to aid vets transition into civilian life. Details of this and more as Good Morning Maine continues.
allergies don't have to be scary. Defeat allergy headaches fast with new Flonase Headache and Allergy Relief. Two pills relieve allergy headache pain. And the congestion that causes it. Flonase Headache and Allergy Relief. It's all good. Angie's list is losing the list. From now on, it's just Angie. So what happens to all the people that needed the list? Oh, yeah. Everything still works. We just made it better. Oh. We even let you book services instantly now. Start your home project at Angie.com. It is said that the eyes are the windows into the soul, which begs the question, can a window have a soul? At Renewal by Anderson, we think so. When it's a window forged from fibrous and over 100 years of refined craftsmanship, the essence of who we are transforms into a superior, stunningly beautiful window. So yes, a window can have a soul. For a limited time, take advantage of this great offer. Find out why we are the better way to a better window. Renewal by Anderson. Pond Hill Farms in Brooks, Maine offers 100% grass-fed beef in a variety of ways. Choose between individual cuts that are state inspected and ready to pop in your fridge or freezer. If you're looking to stock up, Pond Hill Farms offer the option to purchase hanging weight by quarter, half, or whole. We also offer live cattle if you're looking to grow your own herd. Pond Hill Farms also offer rental cottages with spectacular views of the farm and the Maine outdoors. Whether you're looking for fresh Maine meat or a gorgeous place to vacation, Pond Hill Farms is the place to be. There was no salt or sand. And because of that, I slipped and fell. When snow or ice isn't removed, you need a powerful law firm to go after every dollar you may deserve. I needed to protect my rights. Cases like this require resources and experience. Over 25,000 victories for injured Mainers and more than $500 million collected for Maine families. I never thought I'd get that much. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. Maine lawyers working for Maine people. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Senator Angus King says he wants to provide more help for veterans. He met with veterans yesterday at the Brunswick American Legion Hall. He's now on the Veterans Affairs Committee and says they need to do more than just pass legislation. Senator King says a lot of those protections need to be seen through, and he plans to suggest that the VA, the Veterans Services Department of Defense, meet with his committee to follow up. He says there needs to be improvements when it comes to transitioning to civilian life. One of the things I'm most interested in that was talked about today is a buddy system. A, have a human being whose job it is to meet you at the airport and help you through, you know, where do you, uh, where do you take your laundry in Maine and how do you avoid it? How do you, what do you do when it's 30 below on a Friday night? Well, Senator King says it's important for each state to know where exactly veterans are going so someone can guide them through the resources available to them. A speedy warship bearing the name of Maine's capital city is expected to be commissioned into service in the state. The future USS Augusta already has been christened at Austral USA Shipyard in Alabama. It could be ready for service to enter this fall. Navy officials examined possible commissioning ceremony sites in Portland last week, then traveled to Augusta to meet with local officials and tour the city. The Augusta is a littoral combat ship of the Independence class featuring a trimarin hull to keep it stable at high speeds. I don't know what any of that means, but it sounds very cool it and high It looks tech. like a futuristic ship, kind of like a spaceship kind of thing. It's, right. It's kind of neat. So. Right. I don't know what it means, but we did take a look at it, and it looks very cool. So. Yeah. Hey, I think they have a shot of Ellsworth up right now. Let's take a look at the uh, at the bright eye, if we could. We'll get a look at what it's looking like outside right now. I'm kind of throwing the director off there. I don't think she was ready for nice. it. There we go. That Beautiful. Is, isn't that nice? A, a northern version. A, a, I think it's a northern view looking from Ellsworth. And just a beautiful sunny day out there today what a wow. nice day to yeah the sun is off. already the sun is rising early and earlier these days i know it's been long risen at this point but it's beautiful yeah, out we love it yep. so looks like um people in ellsworth are going to have a very nice morning there today yeah too sounds good all right well the time is now 8 24. let's get a look at that forecast with devin biggs all righty craig and emma thank you very much your full weather forecast brought to you by crosby sports shop with a large supply of ammo in stock, custom Damascus knives, fishing supplies of all kinds, concealed weapons classes, and a full line of Dragonfly UV tackle, 
plus the latest in ultraviolet tackle. Call today. All right, here we go. This morning, the last of the clouds are finally getting out of here. That line's right about in there, tracking from the west to the east. So if you're looking forward to a lot of sunshine today, we will have plenty of that for you. So definitely have your sunglasses ready to go as you do head out the door because high pressure, not too far away. It's off toward our north and technically to our south as well. It's kind of a wide area here. So that will mean some nice weather on the way for us today. Before we watch for another system off toward the west, that will be moving from the west, going toward the east. And this will give us our next opportunity for some snow that will move in with about one to two inches of snow in general possible from this next system that will be moving in. Future cast for today, a lot of sunshine on the way. By this evening, by about 6 o'clock or so, clouds will move in from the west, going toward the east by about 10 or 11 o'clock tonight. The snow gets going, not lasting very long. By tomorrow morning, that snow will be all done. And we'll just have some clouds left over with maybe a few, with, with a few peaks of sunshine from time to time. We'll see even more sunshine as the day pro progresses. So in general, decrease in clouds will be common once the snow ends as we head towards the Wednesday. More clouds in the morning, less clouds during the afternoon period. And of course, becoming mostly clear overnight, especially as we head towards Wednesday night and a parts of Thursday morning. As for the snow Snowfall looks a little bit like this, about one to two inches possible before we're all finished up. So nothing too crazy here. No advisories are posted at this point for the snow. So we'll be okay. The snow will move through. Roads might be a tad bit slippery, but we'll be fine as things progress in year Wednesday as the plows do their work. But it's still busy out there, according to the ocean. Look at this, 6 to 25-foot wave heights, according to some of the buoys. The lower the wave heights, closer toward land, but they're really high further out towards sea. And we'll definitely have to keep an eye on this as things do develop. There were some gale warnings in effect along the shoreline that dropped at around 5 a.m. I wouldn't be surprised to see this replaced with small craft advisories with the way the wave heights are looking at this time. We're average high being 29 degrees. We'll reach for the lower 30s today. Lower 40s for your Wednesday. Back in the upper 30s for your Thursday. Back in the middle 40s. Friday, that will feel amazing. Cooling off again Saturday and Sunday, then warming up again as we head towards your Monday. Forecast for today, 30 degrees, mostly sunny. South wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 20 degrees, snow showers, about 1 to 2 inches of snow possible. A south wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, 41 degrees, partly cloudy and breezy out there. West wind at about 25 miles per hour. Your Crosby Sports Shop extended forecast. So here we go, mostly cloudy on Thursday. Highs in the upper 30s, rain and snow showers possible on Friday, mainly during the morning period. They'll start to back off by Friday afternoon. They're looking good for Saturday. Party cloudy with highs in the mid-30s. Finding a surcharge-free ATM just got easier. Maine Credit Unions have the largest surcharge-free ATM network in Maine with over 250 locations. Save money today. Surf ATMs at maincreditunions.org. If you're eligible for Medicare and Medicaid, a Medicare Advantage plan from Anthem Main Health can come with all the benefits you want and zero compromises. Just go to anthemmainhealth.com slash answers or call 855-753-3928 for a one-on-one -on -one Medicare plan review. Ask about our $0 monthly premium plans that include dental, vision, and hearing coverage, along with transportation, a free gym membership, and $0 copay for prescriptions, all for zero extra cost. Plus, you could be eligible for extra benefits to help you save even more. We have plans with up to $2,500 a year to help you pay for over-the-counter health items, groceries, and living expenses like cell phone, electric, or water bills, all on a single prepaid MasterCard you can use at thousands of locations nationwide. Call Anthem Main Health at 855-753-3928 or visit anthemmainhealth.com slash answers and get a Medicare Advantage plan with zero compromises for you and your wallet. It's high school basketball season and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of... Body Graphics Tattoo and Piercing Studio, Coastal Auto Parts, Electrify Maine, Loring Job Corps, Overhead Door Company of Bangor, and Rack Attack Basketball. How much does it cost you to use an ATM? How does zero dollars sound? Get cash and forget the surcharge fees with Maine Credit Union's Surf ATM Network. Find over 250 surcharge free ATMs at maincreditunions.org. Now to the disaster unfolding overseas, the most devastating earthquake in a century hitting Turkey and Syria. 
More than 4,300 people were confirmed dead overnight. The weather hampering the frantic search for survivors in entire neighborhoods that have been wiped off the map. But through the tragedy comes triumph in the form of children being rescued and reunited with what's left of their families. ABC's Lionel Moyes has more. This morning, a desperate search and rescue effort in Turkey and Syria, as the World Health Organization warns the initial death toll from this disaster could climb eight times higher. Here in Syria, first responders digging through the rubble by hand, looking for survivors of the worst quake to hit the region in a century. The situation is too bad. We need urgent help. Hospitals like this one overwhelmed and preparing for even more patients. More than 6,000 buildings have been destroyed in Turkey alone, and aftershocks are keeping people on edge. A frantic run in this city as a building comes crashing down, sending smoke and rubble into the air. Time is of the essence, with the frigid temperatures lowering the chances of survival for people still trapped. This woman still waiting to hear from her daughter. But that's the central side of the She says the bedroom was right over there. Countries around the world pledging immediate assistance. An urban search and rescue team from Los Angeles is deploying with medical teams and search dogs, joining another team from Virginia. They train tunneling, uh, lifting heavy objects, getting concrete off of people, having the dogs that you see behind me today are live find dogs. So they're trained to find live people under rubble. This as survivors wait in the bitter cold to be rescued. This man saying, speak out loud as a woman responds, help, help. Turkey lies in one of the world's most active earthquake zones. An earthquake back in 99 left 17,000 people dead. But today there is an encouraging number. Nearly 8,000 people have already been rescued in Turkey. The hope is that number will continue to grow. Crews have begun releasing toxic chemicals into the air after a train derailed in Ohio. The governor has also ordered the evacuation of hundreds of residents from the town of East Palestine because authorities are concerned about the potential for a major explosion. The train was on its way to Pennsylvania Friday night when it derailed and caught fire. Emergency crews have begun draining the chemicals in some of the cars because they fear they could explode and send metal flying into the surrounding area. The plane was allowed. The plan was to allow the chemicals to leak into a containment pit where they could be burned in a controlled manner. Officials suspect a mechanical issue with one of the rail cars caused the train to jump, jump the tracks. New details overnight about that Chinese spy balloon that was shot down by the U.S. military over the weekend. The incident has revealed troubling gaps in U.S. intelligence gathering, raising concerns in Washington. ABC's Jacqueline Lee has more. This morning, the surveillance balloon shot down over the U.S. is helping reveal new information about China's spy program. Officials say the 200-foot-tall balloon had propellers and a rudder, along with a self-destruct capability that went unused. A senior U.S. official says similar Chinese spy balloons have flown over more than 40 countries, with China relying on people mistaking them for weather balloons. The official tells ABC News the Chinese realized that between satellites and the normal altitude of airplanes, there's an area where you can gather intel. This has exposed gaps in our intelligence. Perhaps most concerning, officials say four previous balloon incidents in the U.S. in recent years, dating back to the Trump administration, initially went undetected. The White House eventually briefed Congress about them in August. There have been at least four incursions in recent years. They were very different. They were off the coast of the U.S. and very brief. But what's frightening about this is the U.S. military had no idea idea those incursions were happening until afterwards. On Saturday, a fighter jet fired a missile at the balloon over the Atlantic, leaving a seven-mile debris field off the South Carolina coast. Unmanned underwater vehicles are being used to search for wreckage. A source says U.S. officials are hopeful. The entire payload will be recovered, including the technology bay, which will be pieced back together enough to understand its full operational potential. The balloon was first spotted over Alaska, then passed over sensitive military installations through Montana, the plains in the Midwest, until reaching the East Coast. The Pentagon said shooting the balloon down over land would risk lives on the ground. But critics accused the White House of not being prepared. They should have been prepared either to intercept, to prevent, to take it down, or to, to try to, um, you know, to capture the balloon so they could capture the equipment that's there. 
A senior U.S. official says a certain group inside the Chinese army controlled the balloon. The FBI has thwarted a plot to attack the power grid near Baltimore. They said it was a credible threat. Now two suspects are behind bars. Fox's Lauren Blanchard is in Washington with more. A power plant plot has been foiled in Maryland. The Justice Department said two suspects intended to destroy key electrical substations near Baltimore. The accused were not just talking, but taking steps to fulfill their threats and further their extremist goals. Federal charges for conspiracy to destroy an energy facility have been filed against 27-year-old Brandon Russell of Florida and 34-year-old Maryland resident Sarah Clendaniel. The affidavit says agents believe the suspects were racially or ethnically motivated and wanted to take out power during the winter in order to cause the most harm. Thankfully, agents stopped the plot before there was any damage. Clendaniel and Russell conspired and took steps to shoot multiple electrical substations in the Baltimore area, aiming to, quote, completely destroy this whole city. Russell and Clint Daniel appeared in federal court Monday afternoon from their respective states. They met online while serving earlier prison sentences. This follows two separate unrelated attacks on electrical substations late last year. One in early December in Moore County, North Carolina, left homes and businesses without power for days. Another over Christmas weekend near Tacoma, Washington, knocked out power to 14,000. The electric grid is in the crosshairs of uh, those who wish to do us harm, whether it's through a cyber attack or getting up close and trying to destroy it physically. Both suspects could face up to 20 years behind bars if found guilty. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Still to come here on the second half of our show, a local Bangor coffee shop will be changing ownership. Some good news for you there. Details on that and more as Good Morning Maine continues. It's time for the ultimate sleep number event on the Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed. Science proves quality sleep is vital to your mental, emotional, and physical health. The Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed, it's temperature balancing so you stay cool. It senses your movements and automatically adjusts to help keep you both comfortable all night. Our smart sleepers get 28 minutes more restful sleep per night. And now save 50% on the Sleep Number 360 Limited Edition Smart Bed plus free home delivery when you add an adjustable base. Ends Monday. Max True Value Hardware in Unity is the best option year-round for all of your home improvement projects. Backed by one of the leading paint manufacturers in the United States, Max will color match or custom mix any color for you. We care about your pets too, carrying all of the essential pet products in our store. During those cold winters, we take the extra step to help with wood pellets ready to load on site. We also fill all size propane cylinders year-round. Max True Value Hardware, we take pride in serving our community. Let us know how we can help you today. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Tuesday, January 7th, 2023. It's also Send a Card to a Friend Day. We all love getting them in the mail, but when was the last time you sat down to let a friend know that you were thinking about them? Handwritten cards and letters aren't as common in this day of electronic mail, but you can certainly brighten someone's day by celebrating National Send a Card to a Friend Day. And with Valentine's Day coming up, as you were mentioning earlier, might be the perfect time to write out a few cards and send them. There's nothing yeah. more special than a homemade Valentine on Valentine's right. Day. Um, I know the Penobscot Marine Museum mm -hmm. is hosting this class soon called Sailor's Valentine's Workshop. And I didn't realize this, but sailors would make Valentines out of shells and things. And oh, how neat. It would, it's yeah. a good Google if you want to because they're beautiful. And yeah. some are still existing from, you know, a long time ago. Very so neat. It's beautiful, but it, handmade You'll make somebody's day, too. Right. You can yeah. send it in the mail. Well, on this day in history, in 1782, a French aeronaut successfully made the first air crossing of the English Channel in a balloon from the English coast to France. In 1927, transatlantic telephone service began between New York and London. 31 calls were made on that first day. I wonder if it cost anything. Probably did, yeah. yeah. Yep. And in 1954, the 
duoscopic TV receiver was unveiled, allowing the watching of two different shows at the same time. So you Googled this this morning, right? Yeah, it was like it looked like you know you picture an old TV, and instead of just one screen, it had two, and it was almost like on, on an angle. So people over here could watch this channel, and people over here could watch another one, yeah. which kind of seemed unique at the time, but probably didn't work too well. Chaotic. Yeah. So. Maybe if you had speakers like we have now, surround sound. Um, yeah. But we didn't have those back. We didn't even have clickers back then. I so, know. You know. I was I was looking at photos of older TVs. This is I'm showing my age here, but yeah. it's so crazy how they were so closer to the ground. Yeah. I'm so thankful that now you just get a TV that's not a piece of furniture, but you can put it up anywhere. Because I like it to be not below eye level. Yeah. I like it to be up a little bit. It, it was a it was like a console kind of thing, just yeah. part, another piece of furniture. Right. Anyway, today's birthdays include TV host Katie Couric, who is 65. Actor Nicholas Cage is 58. Actor Jeremy Renner is 51, and singer Kenny Loggins is 75 years old. The guy who sung Footloose is 75. That's crazy. How about that? Yep, yep. We you listened to that song this morning. Yeah, yeah. Good, it's a good tune, though. It's a good morning song. Yeah. Hey, yep. let's get into the forecast now. It's a beautiful day out there, lots of sunshine. Hopefully, you can enjoy it. Absolutely. Here's Devin Biggs. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Tuesday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Crosby Sports Shop. With a large supply of ammo and stock, custom Damascus knives, fishing supplies of all kinds, concealed weapons classes, and a full line of Dragonfly UV tackle, plus the latest in ultraviolet tackle. Call today. All right, let's get in there this morning. The clouds are getting out of here right now. Here's that line right there tracking from the west going toward the east. So that means some good news for us. That will mean that we're going to see a lot of sunshine. So definitely have the sunglasses handy as you do head out the door. Let's zoom things out right now. This is the last part of that area of low pressure that's moving from the west to the east. There's another system off toward the west, but for now, we will stay quiet today. But our next system will be moving in later on tonight with some snow that will fall with it as well. Before today, a lot of sunshine, more clouds by tonight. By about 10 to 11 o'clock tonight, the snow will pass through with about one to two inches of snow, give or take, before we're all finished up. And we'll all start to back off as we head towards Wednesday morning. As for the winds, not too bad either. They'll be kind of switching directions from time to time, but they will start to pick up again, especially as we head towards your Wednesday with another system that will be passing through overall, mainly that system that's passing through tonight. 30 degrees today, mostly sunny. That south wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 20 degrees. Snow showers on the way, 1 to 2 inches possible. South wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. A lot of sunshine temperatures reaching for the 30s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma? A lot of sun. That's yeah. good news. Well, after seven years of business, a local coffee shop is going through a change of ownership. The owner of West Market Square Artisan Coffee House, Cheryl Mishu, has been serving downtown Bangor what she calls a unique coffee experience for just under a decade. Mishu has recently decided that she will be retiring from the coffee house later this month. The coffee house will be turned over to two of her employees, Wayne Johnson and Aaron Parker. I think I just want to take a little time. We moved down onto the coast and I just want to take some time and figure out what I want to do next. I won't be sitting around eating bonbons. Johnson and Parker say that the coffee house will go through some rebranding, but they offer the same high quality experience that coffee patrons have come to expect. Parker says customers can expect the, some aesthetic changes though. Moving forward, the coffee house will be known as Chimera Coffee. Well, congratulations yeah. to everyone involved. I'm glad that she's able to move on, do some other stuff. And hey, I just want to say if you want to sit around eating bonbons, good for you. Yeah, I think she's earned having Absolutely. a few bonbons. Why and not? I, I love that she's passed it on to her employees. Yeah, that's lovely. Neat. Okay, when we return, Tyler Cruz will have your sports updates. Looking to buy or sell a home? The Moore True team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the Moore True team a call today or visit their Facebook page. Where will your new Chevy take you this year? Anywhere. Find new experiences. Find new roads. Get 2.99% financing for five years on all 2022 Silverado 1500 pickups or get $12.50 cash allowance on this Silverado with a 2.7 liter engine. Plus, current Chevy owners get an additional $2,500 cash allowance. Bath remodeling was revolutionized in this garage in 1984. 
when three brothers created the iconic bath fitter tub over tub process. A breakthrough then, the industry standard now for beautiful baths without the mess, stress, or high cost. A better way from bath fitter means precise measurement, the highest quality acrylic, perfect preparation, and watertight installation backed by a lifetime warranty. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. Family owned and operating in the Bangor area for more than 10 years, Crosby's Welding is here to help you. We specialize in steel, stainless steel, and aluminum welding and fabrication. We serve many of the local industries from Maine lobstermen to the commercial trucking industry and everything in between. Fully mobile on-site construction services right down to custom signs and fire pits. Fast, friendly, reliable service. Give us a call today for a free estimate, 974-7815. Looking to buy or sell a home? The Moore True Team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the Moore True Team a call today or visit their Facebook page. You just wait around a minute, something awful is bound to happen. You saved me. That's what we're here for. 911 Lone Star, tonight on Fox. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's hit the mats, the cheer mats specifically. On Saturday, the MPA Northern Regional Cheerleading Championships over at MDI High School were cold it out. I guess that's the best way to put it. So on Monday, the action all happened at Ellsworth High School. Classes DC North and DC North and B North all competing for regional titles. Class D all one region with schools as north as Holton and Presque Isle and as south as Booth Bay all converging down east at Ellsworth. All schools will get a chance to compete for a state title this coming Saturday at the Augusta Civic Center. Over the weekend, Oxford Hills won A North and Sanford just covering all the bases. So three classes competing here on Monday. Class D started us off followed by Class C and B was the nightcap. For Class D, finishing runners-up by a slim margin of the Bangor Christian Patriots. And then for the eighth time in the past 10 years, Central Aristic Cheer claimed the top spot in Class D. Here is their reaction to winning the gold. Uh, just a lot of teamwork, honestly. We kind of had not the best season last year, so it feels really good to be back. Um, just the confidence, probably just cheering out, cheering like our own teammates on and everything, making sure they know that they can do it. Over to Class C now. This one was a tight race. Central finished in second place. They were just 0.15 points above Bucksport, who finished in third. And then they were four tenths of a point under the Class C champion, the Dexter Tigers. And the win was a pretty emotional one for a few of the Tigers seniors. Here was their reaction after lifting that regional championship plaque. It's like mind blowing because we've worked so hard this whole season just for this. All four years I have been working my hardest. Yeah, this whole team has been working so hard and I cannot be more proud of them. Honestly, I didn't even think that was actually happening. We were sitting there with all of the things that we might have done wrong during that routine just to sit here and then get called first, first place. It's amazing. It was so incredible. Yeah, it was like an out of body experience. We all thought we were like going to lose. We are like, oh, we're doubting ourselves. And then they called Dexter and it was like, whoa, like it was crazy. All right, and in Class B, it's the home team, the Ellsworth Eagles, taking the hardware. And then Herman was looking for their seventh straight regional championship. They come in second place as the runners-up of the Class B North Tournament. Again, all these teams will be able to compete next weekend at the state championships down in Augusta. Let's go to the hardwood now. It was a big weekend for Husson Hoops, both men's and women's hoops, sweeping their weekend series with Northern Vermont Linden. And in the men's game on Saturday, one Eagle broke out for a career game game. Sophomore guard Jeremy Maranta, who has moved into a starting spot this season after DJ Bussey graduated, exploded for a career-high 34 points, with 23 of them coming in the second half. This year, he's averaging 14.9 points and seven boards a game as a guard, their highest rebounder. And he says his goal on Saturday was just to go out there and help the team win. I just wanted to do anything I can to help the team win. We shouldn't have been down by a lot, but it happened. We just had to fight our way back. I was reading the defense to get into my spots. Um, since I'm like a guard, they don't expect me to post up, so kind of took advantage of that. 
Maranta, who's part of a great one-two punch for the Eagles' backcourt with Justice Kendall back there, has taken a pretty big jump between last year and this season. His minutes, points, rebounds, basically everything has increased this season, and he's a big reason for the Eagles' 10-3 and conference record. Speaking to him on Monday, he says he really worked on his pace of play and then prides himself on, quote, doing the dirty work. Like, probably my pace. I feel like last year I used to play a little bit too quick, but this year I slowed down a little bit and I'm letting the game come to me. I can do everything this team needs me to. Um, I like doing the dirty work. A lot of people don't really like doing that, but I love doing it. All right, I love a guard that can do the dirty work. Let's stay with hoops now on that subject. The NBA trade deadline fast approaching. That is this Thursday. And there's one name that I keep seeing floated around with the Celtics, and I don't really know how I feel about it, especially lately after the Kyrie Irving move. Kevin Durant's name keeps coming up in conversation about who the Celtics may look for at the deadline. And it's, it's controversial in the pure definition of the word. KD is one of the best players in the NBA. There's no doubt there. But Boston is already a favorite to win the title. And you'd likely need to move a couple of big pieces, a couple of pieces that are the reason you're the favorite, to land a ramp. So the old saying would be, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I think that's where I lean. But it's also really hard not to get excited about the thought of Kevin Durant suiting up in green. So it should be an interesting week with the deadline coming up. We'll have all the updates here. That is all the time we have for sports. Be right back for the break. Toyota's all-wheel drive vehicles not only conquer the elements, Toyota conquers its competitors by sheer selection. You see, Toyota has 20 different all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive models. That's more than Subaru, more than Honda, more than Jeep. Conquer most anything with a tough Tacoma 4x4, the best-selling midsize pickup for 17 years, and named best truck among midsize pickups. See your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. It wasn't just a little bit of soot on an old family photo. It wasn't just a couple of books soaked in water. And when you called Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, you were not just another customer. That family photo hangs high yet again. And those irreplaceable first editions stay cemented in history. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. Where do you go when you need a real estate appraisal? Who has the experience that I need? Who can I trust? MainVal has over 30 years of experience across the state of Maine in providing top quality real estate appraisal services. Contact us today and speak with one of our many licensed professionals. MainVal, quality delivered on schedule. Call us today at 207-573-3222. That's 573-3222. Here at Black Fly Coffee Company, quality will never be compromised. No matter what type of coffee you choose, whether it's hot, iced, or frozen, you can feel confident that our products are the highest caliber. We're here to assist you with your morning cup of joe, along with your mid-afternoon pick-me-up. And while here, grab a pastry for a snack. We always have fresh pastries available from a local business right here in the area. We look forward to meeting you soon. Drivers are buckling up for higher insurance costs. Fox Business Network's David Asman has the story and more coming up on Fox Means Business. It's not just pain at the pump hurting drivers right now. According to a new report from personal finance website Bankrate, the cost of auto insurance is up nearly 14% from 2022, coming in at just over 2,000 bucks for the year. Meantime, gas prices remain elevated despite ticking down a bit over the weekend. The national average for regular unleaded now at 347 a gallon. That's around 20 cents higher than a month ago. To Wall Street and a sluggish start to the week for your money. The Dow, S&P 500 and NASDAQ all lower on Monday. And getting ready for the big game? Well, you're not alone. According to a new survey from Siena College and St. Bonaventure University, 75% of Americans plan on watching the Super Bowl this Sunday. And get this, around 30% of Americans consider Super Bowl Sunday a national holiday. That's business. I'm David Asman.
It's kind of a holiday. Get yeah. together with your friends or family and right. eat a bunch of stuff, you know. I've always, there, I'm sure there's a reason, but they should change it to Saturday. I know that it's football Sunday, yeah. but it should be changed yeah. to Saturday. We'll have it earlier in the day. Right. So you can go to the game and, you Right, know, midday. So. When I'm governor. <laughs> Yes. But no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and candy for everyone. And candy for yes. free candy on okay. Mondays anyway. Good plan. So, yeah. I like it. Okay, as far as the weather goes, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. Devin Biggs has all the details. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Crosby Sports Shop. With a large supply of ammo in stock, custom Damascus knives, fishing supplies of all kinds, concealed weapons classes, and a full line of Dragonfly UV tackle, plus the latest in ultraviolet tackle. Call today. All right, here we go this morning. The last of the clouds are finally getting out of here. That line's right about in there, tracking from the west to the east. So if you're looking forward to a lot of sunshine today, we will have plenty of that for you. So definitely have your sunglasses ready to go as you do head out the door, because high pressure, not too far away. It's all toward our north and technically to our south as well. It's kind of a wide area here, so that will mean some nice weather on the way for us today. Before we watch for another system off toward the west, that will be moving from the west, going toward the east, and this will give us our next opportunity for some snow that will move in with about one to two inches of snow in general possible from this next system that will be moving in. Future cast for today, a lot of sunshine on the way. By this evening, by about 6 o'clock or so, clouds will move in from the west. Going toward the east by about 10 to 11 o'clock tonight. The snow gets going, not lasting very long. By tomorrow morning, that snow will be all done. And we'll just have some clouds left over with maybe a few with, with a few peaks of sunshine from time to time. We'll see even more sunshine as the day pro progresses. So in general, decrease in clouds will be common once the snow ends as we head towards the Wednesday. More clouds in the morning, less clouds during the afternoon period. And of course, becoming mostly clear overnight, especially as we head towards Wednesday night and a parts of Thursday morning. As for the snow, Snowfall looks a little bit like this, about one to two inches possible before we're all finished up. So nothing too crazy here. No advisories are posted at this point for the snow. So we'll be okay. The snow will move through. Roads might be a tad bit slippery, but we'll be fine as things progress in year Wednesday as the plows do their work. But it's still busy out there, according to the ocean. Look at this, 6 to 25-foot wave heights, according to some of the buoys. The lower of the wave heights, closer toward land, but they're really high further out towards sea. And we'll definitely have to keep an eye on this as things do develop. There were some gale warnings in effect along the shoreline that dropped at around 5 a.m. I wouldn't be surprised to see this replaced with small craft advisories with the way the wave heights are looking at this time. Ravage high being 29 degrees. We'll reach for the lower 30s today. Lower 40s for your Wednesday. Back in the upper 30s for your Thursday. Back in the middle 40s. 40s Friday, that will feel amazing. Cooling off again Saturday and Sunday, then warming up again as we head towards your Monday. Forecast for today, 30 degrees, mostly sunny. South wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 20 degrees snow showers, about 1 to 2 inches of snow possible. A south wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, 41 degrees, partly cloudy and breezy out there. West wind at about 25 miles per hour. The Crosby Sports Shop extended forecast. So here we go. Mostly cloudy on Thursday. Highs in the upper 30s. Rain and snow showers possible on Friday, mainly during the morning period. They'll start to back off by Friday afternoon. They're looking good for Saturday. Party cloudy with highs in the mid 30s. This is going to be great. Taking the shawl off? Okay, I did it. Is he looking at my hairline? My joint pain isn't too bad. Well, it wasn't this morning. I hope I can get through this. Is black psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis making you rethink your everyday choices? Otesla is a pill, not a cream or injection, that can help people with plaque psoriasis achieve clearer skin. Otesla is also proven to reduce joint swelling, tenderness, and pain in psoriatic arthritis. And no routine blood tests required. Don't use Otesla if you're allergic to it. Serious allergic reactions can happen. Otesla may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Some people taking Otesla have depression, suicidal thoughts, or weight loss. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. Doctors have been prescribing Otesla for over eight years. I'm so glad I made it through the day. Don't hesitate. Ask your doctor about Otesla today. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candleton Bowling Alley Centers in Maine. Conveniently located in the heart of Brewer, you always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. 
It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free.